Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make improvements in your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon, presented by 17 Hats. Hello and welcome to today's episode. Buckle in because this one is going to blow you away. I was so impressed with today's guest. Brittany Rattel is a lawyer who specializes in helping creative businesses get legally legit. And part of her business is providing done-for-you contracts and service agreements that you can download off of her website today. And she even has one specifically designed for balloon businesses. So she couldn't have made it any easier. I have purchased this and put it into my uh, workflow at this point, and you can do that too. It is linked in the show notes. It'll take you directly to where you need to go to get this huge, important chunk of your business taken care of, not only quickly, but by a legal expert. So that is what's really important. So you're going to love this interview. This woman is brilliant. I was so excited to have her on today's episode. Let's take a quick break to head over to the YouGlue hotline for some great advice that sticks. And then we will help you get your business legally legit with Brittany Rattel. Welcome to the You Glue Hotline, where we discuss great advice that sticks, brought to you by ProTapes. If you have a question or some great advice to share, click the link in the show notes to call in and leave a voicemail. Hi, Sarah. Uh, My name is Laura Welsh. I am the owner of LWP Balloon Creations, and I'm located just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I've been ballooning for just over a year. I'm a full-time photographer and a mom of three, so it's kind of like my side hustle, even though it's a real business. Um, So I am a huge, huge fan of your podcast. I love how relatable you are and easy to listen to. I even bought your 2024 planner, and I'm slowly getting it filled in. Um, Work in progress. But I'm calling in with a tip of the day for the balloon stuffers out there. Um, So whenever you stuff your balloons in like a uh, balloon machine, like a balloon Z or anything, There's a top rim that you put the neck of your balloon around, and sometimes if you have longer nails or um, even if you don't, sometimes it's just difficult to get the neck of the balloon off after you have finished stuffing it. So my tip of the day is to put a piece of tape around the outside rim of the balloon Z. So you put it Um, from the inside to the outside, and that way when you're all finished, you just kind of lift it up, and that piece of the balloon pops up, and you can just easily maneuver the rest around. Yep, so that's my tip of the day, and I appreciate you listening. Congratulations on your baby, and thanks. ProTapes is a leading manufacturer of specialty tape products like ProGaff, Pro Artist Tape, and our favorite balloon tape, U-Glue, which helps you create amazing balloon arrangements and decorations in less time. You can save 5% on U-Glue when you buy directly from having a party using code BRIGHT at checkout. Welcome to this episode, Brittany. I'm so excited to meet you and talk to you about all things legal, like not a super fun topic, but a necessary topic if we are running our own businesses. So before we jump into that, give us an introduction. Who are you? How did we connect? I mean, you're you're somehow connected in the balloon community and with creatives. So give us your spiel. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me here. And I would agree with you. I am self-aware enough and I'm a confident enough woman now that I know that legal is not the most sexy and most fun part of owning a small business. It is, however, important, like you said. And what we can all usually agree on what's important is that we like making money. We like keeping money. We like getting a full night of sleep. (laughs) We like having, keeping the drama on our shows and out of our businesses and out of our inboxes. And if you're a fan of all of that, then you actually probably are a fan of legal and what it can do to help set up better business boundaries. So that's what I love to do. So I got my start. I graduated from law school more than a decade ago, and I was having my first baby 
at the time. And so I did some other practice areas. I did family law and estate planning right out, but I always thought, and maybe I would help women. And I kind of went to law school thinking I would maybe end up in kind of public policy or nonprofit. And I found that it's really hard to work in that field and also to support a family um, and also to have flexibility. Um, A lot of it was very regimented hours and you had to go and sit in an office. And I really wanted something more that was more freelancy, right? Um, that was more akin to like some of these podcasts I was starting to listen to about like Tim Ferriss and the four hour work week and Pat Flynn and Amy Porterfield. And I was like, well, I wonder like, what about like the online world and like working like virtually and running my own business. And so I kind of fell in love with that world. And then really started serving mommy bloggers were my first clients because I had friends who had been the successful bloggers, had really built up an audience and were kind of the first influencers or content creators of their time, especially on Instagram. And they started running real, you know, air quotes businesses, meaning they were making real money. They needed to set up LLCs. They were having pretty sizable contracts having in now and they needed help, you know? And so I kept on hearing again and again, Britt, I know you don't do this, but I know you're a lawyer. Could you look this over for me? I know you don't do this, but... And then finally, I realized, you know what, this is actually exactly what I want to do is I want to serve women and creatives and creators, really cool people building things and who need some help and are finding a big gap in knowledge and application in terms of how are they supposed to build a modern small business, right? You know, the advice that they were reading online or from their dad or their uncle who was a lawyer just wasn't helpful and didn't understand the realities of what it looked like, especially as they're trying to use social media and online and digital marketing as their main channel and way that they're building an audience and really serving people. So yeah, that's kind of how I got my start. And now I I love, I have a full-time law firm that I serve clients one-on-one. And then I also have a business that provides um, legal information products. And so I have contract templates and I have courses and guides and checklists and all kinds of other resources, realizing that not everyone needs one-on-one services or might be a little overkill or they might be overspending. And I want people to have, especially creative freelancers, really to have good, solid things in their business to help them, to help them keep their money, to keep their sanity, right? And to prevent against some of the stuff that happens, just be more proactive, right? And putting on that business owner hat. So Absolutely. Well, what an intro. Oh my gosh. I think we all, like, especially in the balloon world, you kind of just start, you know, and then right. you get to the point where you're like, oh no, they're asking for insurance. I don't have insurance. I got to figure it out. And then it's like, oh, can you just send over your contract? It's like, oh my gosh, I don't have a contract. What I do don't have a contract. What am yeah. I supposed to do? Right. So yeah. I, I feel like it's very much, you know, you, you build the plane as you're flying it. Yes. But even that, when you get to the point where you want a contract, sometimes you're borrowing from someone else or you're right. in a different state or, you know, you're like, Googling contract and you have like no idea even where yeah. to start. So you said you have some templates that kind of give you that head start. Exactly. Yeah. So I sell a balloon client service agreement. So it's like really niche. In fact, a lot of people are like, that's a really random one. And I'm like, look, I love my balloon girls. Like I love my balloon artists. And I connected early on at Alt Summit with that Houston girl so was building a really great balloon audience. Anyway, we connected and she was like, I would love to have a good one. And so it stuck in my mind of like, oh, so I did a little was it, research and I'm was like, was it Kelsey, um, that balloon yes, girl? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. So, and Kelsey was like, I, yeah, please put one together. I will happily buy. It. And I know I have other people. And so for me, I was like, okay, that's worth it to me. To, if, for, and I looked online and found that no one else was selling anything right. And addressing that. And, um, well, it's and like I these... known enough and worked with people to know it's a little bit of a hybrid of like a creative deliverable, but also right. an event vendor service. And so there were some particular things we needed to have there to make sure you were covered with that client relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's niche, but there's thousands of us. So it's not that niche. You know, I feel like the closest I'm always trying to modify like florists. That's like the closest I can get, but it's not the same. So let's take a really quick break and then let's get into what type of things are not only in that service agreement, but like, what do we even need to be aware of? Because that's not my area. Like, I don't even know what could go wrong, unfortunately, until it does. <laughs> so right. we will be right back after this quick break. Are you ready to take your balloon business to the next level? Look no further than having a party wholesale, your ultimate destination for all things balloons. Having a party wholesale is on the cutting edge of new products that will wow your clients from top brands like Tough Text, Jamar, Anagram, Ellie's, Premium Conwin, and introducing Brooklyn, a new latex balloon line created by the Having a Party family. They've got the widest selection to fuel your creativity. Join the successful league of professional balloon artists who shop at havingaparty.com. 
All right. Welcome back. So you talked about you have this download ready to go, ready to purchase, which is amazing. I'm like, take my money right now. What type of things? I mean, obviously, without telling us verbatim what is in that, but I don't even know the first thing about what to put in a service agreement. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, if you break our stuff, you have to replace it or like what time we're going to be there. Like, where does this go in the booking process? Yeah. So all really great questions. And so like many other service providers, I would recommend that as part of your process for a lot of people, they'll have some sort of web form or like intake, you know, inquiry of like, Hey, I'm interested in services and you'll get some initial information. And then after that, your next step might be either a a phone call or an email or a zoom or something, one of those depending on, and it might be you. And that also could be a team member, right? As you grow and maybe someone else kind of helps with that process. After that, and you're ready to like, hey, this is what we're going to work together. And we've decided that is the time to send over a contract and that agreement, you know, it doesn't have to be printer and scanner and ink, right? And hand signatures. Nope, don't. We're not like in Hogwarts. We're not getting a Harry Potter letter. So we don't need to live (laughs) in that world. Okay. Make this easy on you. Use HoneyBook, use 17 hats, use Dubsado or something. But that contract should cover some really important things. It should define who is doing what, right? So the first, first important thing is who. So you as a company are being engaged to deliver services to somebody else. And so it should identify both of you really clearly. The first important thing here is to to think about, make sure that you are, it is your company doing it and not you. If you've set up an LLC, make sure you're doing business in the name of your LLC. If you have it, highly consider doing that. Go buy my other course, Lawfully Ever After, and get your LLC set up just because you are in people's places. Like you have a physical service and stuff can go wrong. Things can get hurt. Stuff can get on fire or rip out things off walls, whatever. And it's, it's really yeah, nice. Yeah, a to lot have. can go wrong. Like a lot can go wrong. A balloon quickly. is going to kill someone, but like a ladder definitely a ladder falling right or yeah something pops and a kid or a dog eats it you know and suffocates or whatever like you know we always like you plan for the unexpected and that llc for the cost of it gives you that shield of liability so that your business money and your personal money is not in the same bucket which is really important so and then the next thing is that that what and so this service agreement should cover and that's why i have like i have you know written in my template some options of like here's For example, it might be a 10 foot arch or a three color thing, or it might have marquee letters or whatnot. Some of the common things that I see, you know, balloon artists doing, and then it should be really clear what the deliverable is, because when you scope for work based on what you're going to do, this is where you get screwed if you're not specific, right? Because somebody came and they're like, oh, I thought I was getting this big a display. I thought you were doing the whole room. I'm underwhelmed by this. You know, you have an an unsatisfied client. And so this is where you really want to be able to point back to your contract and say, this was our understanding and this is what we priced for. And then most importantly is when is it going to be delivered? How is striking or going to pick up going to work? Like, is a client going to come and get it from you? Are you going to deliver and install on site? Is there anything that you need set up for you to be able to do your job? And then the next important thing is payment, right? We all care about money and we want to make sure we're getting money in inner way. And in this business, we want to make sure we're really clear when someone can cancel and how that's going to happen, right? Yeah. Um, what is the what is the timeline they have? And so I have a couple different options. I do recommend that you accept some sort of payment to lock somebody in. I see where's where a lot of people go wrong is they invoice just on the back end and that will work for everybody until it doesn't, right? Right, and Sometimes exactly. we're not great at seeing those clients who are planning on screwing us or who have booked all kinds of work for a party and not thought about the budget, right? Or they didn't tell their spouse about the budget and we're the ones left hanging the bag and we just don't want to be in that position. Something, a weird thing there that I remind a lot of my event vendors is try not to call that a deposit. Deposit. I know we use it in the industry and are like, oh, that's like deposit. But a deposit can have special legal meaning, meaning you get that back if certain things happen. Okay. And that's normally not what's happening here. It's really a booking fee or like an initial payment. And so call it that. And that's better language and that better describes what we want to happen, which is this is a non-refundable amount of money you're giving me. And if you walk in this certain time period, which I'm explaining and detailing in the contract, because I'm telling you how to do that. Then, you, then that money is mine because I turned away other work. I started buying supplies. I, I made plans in reliance on that. And that cost me money, right? Yeah. And then that, you know, you can have additional payments depending on the size of the project. If it's a really big undertaking, if it's a lot of setups, if it's multiple rooms, or you're having to hire other work or buy other product to get ready for it, then have another payment, right? Again, make sure you're aligning incentives. So you're both working for the end goal, which is to have a really successful experience. 
business and that people are incentivized to keep paying, right? And yeah. to make sure that when it comes down to the event, right? There, there's not a huge check because there's a weird Murphy's law about small business and that the bigger the check that someone has to write, the more opportunity for something to go wrong. Like suddenly yeah. they're not happy and it's not the colors they wanted and it's not, and it didn't quite pop like they wanted to, even though you've heard nothing about this up until this yeah. point, like this is, this is all news to you. And yet something, something weird happens in that psychology sometimes of writing that check. And so don't let that happen to you. Right. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. So much. Like, I feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose. I'm so excited here, but but I'm just saying this out loud so I remember. But I love the idea of calling it a service agreement. And, and it's still a contract. But instead of calling it a contract, because I have always been like, yeah, I'm selling balloon bouquets. Party City doesn't make you sign a contract. But I like that it's the service agreement because it it's a place for all that stuff to go. Otherwise, right. you're trying to cram all that information into an invoice or into an email or into it just like or put it on nice, like a sales page. And you don't yeah. really know if they saw it. You don't know if they agreed to it. And that's really hard to enforce versus something that like, oh, this person has an e-signature. Like it was very yes. clear about the process of how we're going to work together. And guess what? That not only protects you, it gives your clients a lot of clarity and confidence of like, oh, this person knows what they're doing. They have thought through of how right. this entire interaction will go from, from start to finish. And it's very clear and people like clarity. So yeah, I'm that. trying to work on my communication and just be like the absolute best. And I do think even something of like, well, wait, when did she say she's coming back? I got to go look through that email where she right. talked about the strike versus like, here's the one place where it says everything. And I use 17 hats, which is a, a CRM. Yeah. They have that as like a three click option. It can go directly exactly. to like, quote contract and then it generates the invoice. So it's no additional work for me. Once you I just set drop that it up. in. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what most people I found who are using some sort of software. Yeah. Whether it's HoneyBook, 17 Hats, or, you know, Panadoc or Dimsada or whatever. And yeah, and you can use smart fields. And, and the way I structure my contracts is they're all the same. Once you bought one of them, you know how to use the other. They come with a great like color code. It's like, think of like doing those great paint by number. And so everything always means the same. Yellow means stuff you should change and personalize. That's where you should put your special things for your business. Pink means you need to choose. So you decide to choose. How do you want to bill? How do you want to handle intellectual property rights? How do you want to handle delivery? You choose one, you delete the other. And blue is always optional, right? Like for example, on mine, balloon agreement, you can add a clause that says, Hey, I'm ex exclusivity. Cause some people really care, especially for a particular event that I'm the exclusive vendor for this, you know, and especially yeah. if I'm giving a shout out or that's, you know, you're maybe doing a, a, and charging a little bit less because this is a big, you know, deal or what it is. And you might have some exposure to other clients. You're going to make sure your work is consistent and there's not another vendor and it's being confused on, well, who did what balloon? So, oh, so that's so interesting. People, that matters to them. Sometimes they're like, no, I don't care if you have other people there. So maybe you want to delete that. Right. Yeah. And that's why I, I make this. So, and it's an, an edible word document with a little mini training that comes with it. It's a screen flow video of me walking through the contract because I want my people uh, who engage and get my resources to feel more informed when they read them, right? I want people to understand what's in their contracts because I want it to match the rest of your business. I want it to match what you're saying on your sales calls and your right. consults and on your web pages. Like, I don't, I don't want this to be like some gotcha language where people are like, where did this come from? No, that doesn't. That right. Doesn't I know our websites are all like, hey, party animal, I got you, bestie. And then you send this like hardcore legal document. Like, that no I'm one sorry. Can what? I thought we were <laughs> friends. And now you hit me with this liability, which you should have liability language in your contract being like, or like, you know, talking about, I have a clause talking about weather because like, we are, we're not God, we're not controlling the weather. And yeah. so we want to make sure, look, I'm a professional, I'm doing the best, but if things happen, if we have a gust of wind, I have only planned for a certain amount of materials, right. You know, or for certain conditions, if other things happen, that's out of my control. And so the performance might be related to that. And I'm not, I'm not liable for that. Right. And you want to make sure you have it. that kind of catch all protection. Yeah. I love it all. All right. Let's take a quick break. And then I want to have a little section in here. That isn't going to apply to everybody, but it is going to apply to some people because a lot of balloon businesses have started side hustles within the balloon business, myself included. And we are very much in that online space that you seem like very well versed. And then that gets dicey about like someone buys your download, then they sell it to someone else or like it's kind of like the Wild West operating an online business. So I do want to touch on that. Let's take a quick break and then we'll get back into it. Hi, my name is Jeff from Balloon Suite, and I have a really quick question for you. Would you like to work with people who know what works to grow sales and reach people who are interested in your decor online? I bet you would. 
And I bet you would be interested in working these people to help reach your particular sales goals or help to overcome the business challenge you're facing right now as an owner. At Balloon Suite, my entire team knows the Balloon Decor business. We have hundreds of clients in Balloon Decor. We've seen it, we, we've done it, and we can help you get through those sales and marketing and business challenges that you're facing so that you can reach your goals. You can learn more about our packages at balloonsuite.com. All right. Welcome back. Let's talk about what you mentioned in the beginning. You talked about how you started based on like mommy bloggers and how this this whole new world of kind of making money online. I'm doing it with a podcast. Other people have like spreadsheets. Like they've like they've figured out how to do a pricing calculator. So now they're selling that pricing calculator right. or like they have come up with recipes. So they are selling those recipes. And I love it. It's like a little internal marketplace that we are building for ourselves. But things can get icky, you know, like suddenly yeah. someone repurposes your download and they sell it to someone else or suddenly, you know, multiple people have the same idea at the same time. Right. And you're kind of competing for that market. Like what is your spiel when it comes to being an online business? Because I do think yeah. this applies to a good handful of balloon decorators. Yeah, for sure. And it's so well said and that it is, there are opportunities and then there are also challenges to it. And it's about finding that really happy place in the medium and understanding what are our boundaries? What are things that we can and should do? And what are stuff that we got to let go? And that's really, really where I usually counsel most of my community as because if you're part of the sharing economy, the creative economy, there is going to be a push and pull and people unfortunately don't understand copyright law as well as they should, but there are some things you can do. So if, when you create a new work and new content, when you create a calculator or a spreadsheet or an ebook or a blog or a photo or an illustration, anything like that, that is original work and you own the rights to that work. You own that, you own a hundred percent of the copyright to that just by the nature of creating it, right? And so you don't have you really to do understand. anything. It just, you don't have to do anything. Yours. No. But there's that but, but you do get some enhanced enforcement rights if you register the copyright to that work. And I actually have a registration right here that I need to send off to a client. So, and what that entails is actually taking the step of registering that copyright with the United States Copyright Office, the Library of Congress. And it costs 55 bucks per work. There is a way that you can do some group registrations, but they're pretty limited. You can really just do them for like a group of photographs. So if you're a photographer or create a lot of photographs, you could do up to 750. You can do some unpublished works up to 10, meaning like you've created them, but they haven't been sold yet to the public. Otherwise, you got to do it one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm not saying that it's it's feasible or plausible for us to register the copyright to every single thing we create. It's likely not going to happen. But some things that I recommend and that I do for my clients all the live long day are to protect something like a bigger work, like an ebook, like a book. You can do your entire website. So you can do a website if your website has lots of content on it and a mixture of both text and photos, right? Go ahead and do your whole website, right? That's one registration. You can also do an entire online course, one registration. So I do that a lot for my course creator clients because there's lots of goodies and different medium and format and, and good stuff in the guts of that course that we want to protect. Cool. So I didn't even think about that, like a website. Yeah. And I think some people are, I don't know, lazy and just like your website so they recreate it. And then, right. you know, I think most of the time it's just a compliment. Like, I really love your website and oops, I didn't realize how closely it aligned. Or sometimes right. it can go all the way to like, oh, oops, I took all of your language and wording. But like, <laughs> yeah, that's especially now even... in the ages of like AI, right? When people yeah. are like, oh, it can scrape off everything. And and that's a whole nother thing that like New York Times has just launched a lawsuit <laughs> a couple yeah. weeks ago against AI, against chat GPT. So we're going to see how that's going to suss out. That's also going to be a few years honestly, till mm -hmm. we're probably going to get clarity from the Supreme Court on copyright law and fair use. So in the meantime, you know, some things that you can be thinking of as a creator and as someone who also might be using and wanting to share about other people's work is that it's always best practice to get permission before you share. So really the only thing that you can do without asking is like in-app sharing features. So think of like sharing someone's post to your stories using that paper airplane. Instagram gives you a license to do that. So you don't need to ask anyone permission. You're good. Why is because they've already covered that in their legal terms. And it's also linking back to them. So it's not actually you reposting their content. So And there's a huge uh, difference between taking a screenshot Chopping off your name and yeah. putting it when up you as your own. you take a screenshot, a little dinger should go off, a little red flag should go off in your head of like, do I have permission to share this? And even if you think, well, I'm going to tag them, I'm going to give them credit. No, no, no. Okay. 
tagging and credit does not cancel infringement. Crediting does not cancel infringement. Interesting. Okay, okay yeah. cool. And it's a really big miss that a lot of people don't understand. And they might be completely okay with it. They might love it. But why not, why not just ask? Send them a DM and say, hey, I'd love to share this for this purpose. And if someone says yes, that's good. But I would, I would take that to the bank. Because in the absence of anything in writing, like we talked about, you own the rights to all your stuff. And that includes other people. And we as creators, as people in the creative economy, should try to do better about respecting that and honoring that and sharing that to make sure we all understand the way this works so that we can keep on solving people's problems, creating good content and getting paid well for it, right? And incentivizing good creation and good content out there. And then the other tool to understand is trademark. And trademark is a tool to protect branding. And so this is when you would want to protect like the name of your business, your logo, your slogan, possibly the name of your course or your mastermind or your retreat or your podcast. And that's a tool that I use. And I filed, you know, more than 300 trademarks for clients to protect different elements of their branding as they might try to grow and then engage and get to open up licensing avenues. And licensing Mm -hmm. is that really cool scheme where someone comes to you and is like, Hey, I want to do a course together, or I want to do a line of socks or, Hey, I actually want to do a physical product. And I know you're an expert in this and you have this audience and cool brand name, but you're not an expert in this product how about I use your name and then I'm going to give you a portion of every sale. And that's how licensing works. But to have that, you first need to own your own brand real estate. And that comes through having a trademark. So yeah. Very cool. Wow. Well, that's probably more than a lot of us listening need. But at the same time, it's good because like, I feel like I always get to the point where I needed to know it and I didn't, you know, like, it's like, oh, I'm never going to need to worry about copyright. And then all of a sudden I'm like trying to copyright something. And that's when it's like, oh, I wish I had listened. (laughs) I wish I I wish I wish I had some tools. And I do have a newer product. That's a copyright registration kit in my shop that walks through exactly how to do it because I get so many questions about it. And it's not that like, it's that hard. It's just a weird government website, right? It was built in the early nineties. Government and they haven't websites. It, what right? in the world? Like <laughs> Gover- I just... Government websites. If you're on a website and it, you're like, oh, this is smooth and an amazing UX. You are not on a government website. For you real. are someone else trying to sell you <laughs> a form or whatever, who are like, oh, we'll fill it out for you. And you don't need to pay extra money for that. So I have a really, it's a great guide and walks you through exactly screen flow, how to register your own copyright. And I think it's a tool that every creative should have. That way they can do their own website. They can do their own curriculum and course materials and content. And then if you have something that starts popping off, if you have a video that goes viral, register the copyright to that because there will be some company out there that will use it and they will make money from it and they will not pay you. And you can go and try to do a DMCA takedown, a cease and desist, and they're going to go like, Nana, nana, boo, boo. And the law is you can't launch a copyright lawsuit until you have that registration in hand. And and then people who do this on the regular know this. And so is when you have that registration, it totally changes like the financial dynamics and negotiation position. And then you can go to Instagram or, you know, and you can go to Facebook or eBay or Kajabi or whatever and be like, hey, this is infringing. And they're like, do you have a certificate? And you're like, yes. And they're like, oh, please, ma'am, front of the line that will be taken down today. Like nice. they are not playing, right? Yeah. And so it means you can actually get people to stop. And then you can also get recovery because you can be like, hey, BuzzFeed, you took my video that belongs to me. So here's my licensing agreement. I'd like you to pay me as if we had entered into agreement for you to use my footage. Because And that did. could totally happen. I could totally see BuzzFeed being like top 10 most amazing gender reveals. And yep. it's all balloon people that didn't get yep. compensated. And it's your work. Those are your photos. That's your video, right? Which you have a right to. And that's another thing to include and talk about, right? In the contract, or if a client asks you for photos or videos, right? I have in my contract that you have a right to record and and take some taping right before you leave if you want. And if you don't, then you need to think about, well, who owns the rights to those photos? The photographer is the default owner of any of the rights to their photos, unless you have something in writing. And so that's a good thing to keep in mind too, is as you're building your portfolio or maybe, maybe creating content, um, it's great if you can take your own footage. If not, then you need to be thinking about who has the rights to these photos and, and do I have permission to use them and share them commercially? So yeah. love it. Love it. Okay. We're going to take one more break and then I'm going to give you the floor and I want you to just sell all of your stuff to us. <laughs> This is not sponsored, but I'm obsessed with you. I feel like you have so many things that we could all use and benefit from. So I just want you to rattle off like, where do we start? What do we need? Take our money. We will be right back. Hey, listeners, before we wrap up today's episode, let's talk about our fantastic sponsor, the Balloon Guild. Do you ever see amazing balloon decor online and wonder how did they make that? 
The Balloon Guild is revolutionizing the industry by standardizing recipes, SOPs, and offering unparalleled training. Their mission? To elevate balloon artists worldwide, ensuring efficiency, profitability, and unparalleled professionalism. For business owners and their teams, the Balloon Guild isn't just a resource, it's a game changer for growth and development. For me, it's been the ultimate shortcut in finally getting things out of my head and onto paper, so I'm not making things up on the fly and so my team can work together to create consistent, fast decor. Visit their platform today at theballoonguild.com or by using the link in the show notes. New recipes and resources are released every month. All right. Welcome back. You have all these resources. I am just like overwhelmed with your knowledge, with what you have to offer, with how easy you're making it. So I am confident that 99.9% of people listening are like, I don't have that. I need that thing too. I like that download. Where do we start? If you send us to your website, what Mm -hmm. are like the top three things that we should check out to protect ourselves? I love this question. So you're going to want to go to creativecontracts.co is my digital resource shop. And on there, first of all, I have a quiz. And so if you're not sure what you want, I have a free quiz for there that will ask you some questions about what your business is and what do you sell and how do you sell it? And it will give you some personalized recommendations. And it's very good. I'm updating it all the time and tagging everything. And because I'm like, I want to make sure it's useful to you. But here are my top recommendations. So if you are a balloon artist and you don't have a client service agreement, this is your this is your first buy. This is the most important buy. And can I and ask it, how much that is? Yes. So I'm trying to think what I think it's 325. Let me check. Okay. I want to make sure I'm giving so you so less than best. one event. <laughs> Exactly. Less than one event. Less than getting screwed over one time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And you immediately be like, why did I not have this over? Yes, it's 325. And again, comes with training, editable, so you can change it. Like I'm not trying to hide the ball here. You'll rinse and repeat. You'll get this dialed and you will use it again and again and again, right? To make sure that you're saving money, delivering on expectations, right? So that's your number one because you're running a business and we want to protect our number one revenue stream. And that's your service-based business, providing balloon art services. Absolutely. Yeah. So number two, I recommend a website bundle. So if you have a website, okay, any type of website, scroll to the bottom of your website and see what's in your footer. Do you have a privacy policy? Do you have terms, right? This is something that every website needs. Really, privacy policy is required now in several states. And we also have some federal regulation about privacy law based on the content of your website and who it's selling to and how. So eventually we'll have a federal privacy law. We're probably still a few ways around from that. And then your terms and conditions on your website aren't required by law, but they're a really good idea because they'll say things like, hey, all the stuff on my website, it all belongs to me, right? Yeah, and if nice. you buy services from your website or if you make comments that I have a right to use that, if you have like user feedback or you allow people to do reviews, you want to make sure you can use those in your business any way you want. And this will give you permission to do that and make sure people can't do weird things like upload bad stuff to your website or mess with it or do anything else, right? It's kind of your basic clubhouse rules of running your website. So website bundle is my number one best-selling product for a reason is because literally everyone needs it, right? Yeah. Otherwise you're wandering around the internet with a naked footer, like you're streaky huh. on the internet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not everyone will realize it, you know, only nerds like me that actually read legal policies, you know, for a living, but it's some really important things. And the other thing is that if you are allowing people to purchase through your website, whether it is balloon services, or like we talked about, maybe some of those digital downloads. Maybe you have some templates, some editables, some printables or whatnot. You want to make sure that the terms of purchase are covered by something because if someone does a chargeback or if there's a refund or a dispute, your bank is going to ask for, hey, what were the terms of this purchase? And it's really nice to be able to send them. These are the terms that so-and-so agreed to, right? Because they were on their website and they agreed to them during checkout. So yeah, yeah. awesome. And I have additional ones for like, if you have an online course or sell an actual digital product that are more specific that you can add to that, those checkout links to the checkout process. And those can be really helpful too, especially. Well, but there, I mean, there are a ton of us that sell our specific method of making a garland, my right. specific way of doing framework, you know, and once it's out there, it's just kind of like, there's no way to prevent someone else from just going around and teaching the same thing. Yeah at a lesser cost. So this sounds like it protects you to some yes, degree. Exactly. It gives some boundaries around this and it specifies people have a single person license for personal use, but they're not allowed to use it for commercial use, right? They can't turn around and 
each out, you know, eke out your watermark and load it back up and sell it or distribute it or put it in a Facebook group or do other things weird that you're telling them they're not allowed to do. So, yeah. So those are probably like the most important of is, you know, getting your balloon service agreement, your website bundle. And then if you sell digital terms, getting the one that's the right fit for what you're doing, right? Whether that's a mastermind group, digital product, an online course, or like a subscription, I have one specific to all of those. And so, and that's again, what should be in that checkbox and make sure you're using that checkbox as part of your e-commerce platform. However, you're checking out and taking people's money. Most of the platforms uh, that I've worked with now allow that functionality and Instead of it just going to Kajabi's or Thinkific or WooCommerce terms, you want your terms in there because theirs are just going to be pretty watered down vanilla, but they're not going to have specific stuff about, hey, you're buying this and this is what you can do with it. And this is what you can't do with it. Right. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I am like, I am excited because this is something I can do by today, put up in my 17 hats workflow and like, it's done. Like I'm done. It's It's I'm so you are, excited. You were actually solving problems. You're not just like, oh, that feels icky. I'm going to put I'm putting my head in my sand because I don't know where to go, right. how to do it or how to close that loop on it. Or um, like add copyright I, law to the list of things I need right. to figure list, out. Like, no, thank things. you. I'm going to learn in my spare time. No, I want to make this easy for you, right? I want you to get legally legit for less. And that's my whole spiel of what I want with everything that I'm doing online, right? And I've got a, lots of education resources too. So if you like learning and want more deep dives in into running events or doing in licensing or what's the difference between copyright or trademark and what about fair use? I've got a, a podcast. It's on hiatus right now, but we'll be picking up in a couple of weeks. And I've also got a YouTube channel. So, and you can see all of that link from BrittanyRattel.com. So, well, you're incredible. This was amazing. I'm so glad we connected and I'm sure we will have some follow-up questions. Maybe we'll do another episode in the future because we did not start balloon businesses to get into all of the legalities. But like you said, we want to protect our money. We want to sleep at night and this will help us do it. So thank you for coming on. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Sarah, for having me. Thanks for listening. As usual, I tried to keep it bright and light. Our presenting sponsor is 17 Hats, the CRM I use to cut the chaos and manage my entire balloon business. From the lead capture form on my website to workflows and email templates, invoicing and grab and go garland automated bookings, it's all powered by 17 Hats, the best customer relationship management system for balloon businesses. There's even a 50% off coupon code waiting for you in the show notes wherever you're listening. I'll see you next week in another episode.